In this video, I'll go over setting up Synology Mail Server, which is one of Synology's mail server packages that you can run on a Synology NAS. I'll specifically go over the way I configured my setup using a Synology NAS that I have running at home using a residential internet connection with a dynamic IP address. I'd also like to add that running a mail server shouldn't be taken lightly and you should be vigilant when setting one up. This means setting up accounts with strong passwords, making sure to keep software up to date, and implementing security features that are made available to you. As an overview of my setup, I'm running Synology Mail Server on a DS220+, Plus, which is the entry-level 2-bay NAS from Synology's Plus series. I use Google Domains for DDNS to keep the domain I'm using for email up to date with the dynamic IP address assigned by my internet service provider. For incoming email, I use DYNU Systems as an email forwarder. With this setup, mail gets sent to their servers first, gets scanned for spam and viruses, then gets forwarded to the mail server running on my Synology NAS. For outgoing email, I use DYNU Systems once again as an SMTP relay, which allows me to send outbound emails through their system. This provides a more trusted and reliable source from where emails are delivered from by allowing me to set up SPF and DKIM DNS records for my domain. I've enabled the SMTP service on my Synology NAS for email delivery and enabled both POP3 and IMAP to allow third-party email clients to be able to receive email. I also enabled port forwarding and created firewall rules on my router to allow external access to the email services running on my Synology NAS, and enabled the email security and reporting features offered through Synology Mail Server. Note that this configuration works well for me, but I wouldn't necessarily run a production email server with the equipment and internet connection that I'm using. Now let's get to the actual setup, and I'll start by enabling the user home service. This is done by going to Control Panel, User and Group, click on the Advanced Listing, then under the User Home section, check the box to enable the User Home service, then click Apply. Next, I'll create a new local user by selecting the User Listing. Click on the Create button to bring up the User Creation Wizard. Enter in a username and password I'd like to use, then run through the remainder of the wizard taking the default options along the way. Now I'll bring up the Package Center, then search for and install Synology Mail Server. I'll then click Yes on this window to install Perl and wait for the installation to complete. Next, I'll work on setting up DDNS with a domain I have hosted with Google Domains. I'll bring up My Domains, Click on Manage for the domain I would like to work on, then click on the DNS entry for the domain. Here I'll click on Show Advanced Settings, then click on Manage Dynamic DNS under the Dynamic DNS section, and click Save to create an A record for the domain. I'll then expand the Dynamic DNS listing and click View Credentials to view the username and password needed to set up the DNS on my Synology NAS. Now I'll switch back to DSM, bring up Control Panel, External Access, select the DDNS listing, then click Add, which brings up this Add DDNS window. For Service Provider, I'll select Google, then enter in the host name I would like to set up, along with the username and password that I got from the Google Domains Dynamic DNS listing, then click Test Connection. The test completed with a status of normal, so I'll finish up the setup by clicking OK. Next, like I mentioned in the overview earlier, I use DYNU systems to manage both incoming and outgoing email sent through my Synology mail server setup. To do the same, you need to go to dynu.com, click on the email menu, and subscribe to both the outgoing SMTP relay, which is used for sending email, 
and Email Store and Forward, which is used for receiving email. Both cost $9.99 per year, and you can sign up for both by clicking on the Get Started option from their respective web pages. Enter in the domain name you would like to use, then click Add. You'll then need to create an account and make payment for both services. In my case, I've already signed up, so I'll log in to my account, which brings me directly to my control panel. Here, I'll click on Email Services, where you can see the two services that I'm subscribed to. Note that DYNU Systems has tutorials for setting up both the outbound SMTP relay and email store and forward services, which I'll link to in the description below. After signing up for the DYNU Systems email services, I'll use their DKIM wizard, which I'll link to in the description below, to create the public and private key pair needed to create the DKIM name server record. Here I'll enter in relay.ferdbabas.com for the domain name, mail for the domain key selector, and change the key size to 2048, then click Generate. Now the public and private keys are displayed along with instructions to create the DKIM DNS record. Now I'll switch back to Google Domains to set up the remaining DNS records that are needed for email to work properly. Here I'll create a CNAME record for mail, create MX records to point to dynu.com to take advantage of the email store and forward service that I signed up for earlier. Create an SPF record which identifies dynu.com as the mail server that is allowed to send emails on behalf of my domain. And create the public portion of the DKIM record where I entered in mail.domainkey.relay for the hostname and pasted in the public key from the DKIM wizard that I ran through earlier in the data field. Note that if you signed up for the DYNU Systems email services, you can use these exact entries I used for both the MX and SPF records, but your DKIM record is personalized to your domain. Now I'll click Save to complete creating the custom records. Next, I'll switch back to the control panel of my DYNU Systems account select Email Services, then click on the icon to manage the SMTP outbound relay service. I'll then select DKIM signing, then paste in the DKIM private key that was generated from the DKIM wizard, then click Save. I'll also click up a level to set the password for the SMTP outbound relay account that I'll be using when setting up the Synology mail server SMTP section, then click Save once again. Now I'll bring up DSM, then from the main menu, I'll launch Synology Mail Server. Here I'll click on SMTP, then enable SMTP. I'll then check the box for sender name and login name must be identical. Enter in the domain name that I've set up in the hostname box and enable both the SMTP SSL and SMTP TLS options. Next, I'll click on the SMTP Relay button and enable SMTP Relay from the window that pops up. I'll then enter in the SMTP Relay server and port provided by DYNU Systems under the SMTP Outbound Relay service. Enable the Always Use a Secure Connection TLS option, as well as enable the Authentication Required option and enter in the account and password, which again were listed and set from the SMTP up on Relay service webpage, then click OK. At this point, SMTP should be configured and we can test sending an email by first installing MailStation along with PHP from the Package Center. Once installed, I'll launch MailStation from the main menu, which brings up the RoundTube webmail client. I'll log in with the user that was created earlier, then compose a test email that I'll send to my Gmail account. 
I'll then switch to my Gmail account and I can see that the test email that was just sent was received successfully. I can also confirm that the SPF and DKIM records are working properly by clicking on the More menu then selecting Show Original. Next, I'd like to set up IMAP and POP3 to be able to use an email client to check my mail. I'll do this by bringing up DSM, then launch Synology Mail Server from the main menu once again. I'll then click on the IMAP and POP3 listing, enable all of the options that are listed, then click OK. Now I need to enable external access to the email server through my router by setting up port forwarding and firewall rules. This needs to be adjusted to your router, but here we can see the various rules that are needed for SMTP, IMAP, and POP3 access. I also need to enable firewall rules on my router to allow access to the IP address of the Synology mail server to the same ports that were set up through port forwarding. At this point, I can start setting up an email client to be able to send and receive emails, and I'll go through the steps using Thunderbird. Here, I'll bring up Account Settings. Then, under Account Actions, I'll select Add Mail Account. I'll enter in my email address and password from this Set Up Your Existing Email Address window, then click Continue. I'll click on Configure Manually to have a look at both the incoming and outgoing servers and I'll adjust the incoming mail server to use SSL and TLS, then click Done. I'll add security exceptions from these warning windows. Then I'll bring up the newly set up email account and compose a test message that I'll send to my Gmail account once again. I'll click Send, confirm another certificate exception, click OK on this Send Message Error pop-up window, then click Send once again, which now successfully processes the request. I'll bring up my Gmail account once again, and here we can see the test email sent from Thunderbird was delivered successfully. I'll open the email, click Reply, and send a reply to the email to check if the Synology mail server can properly receive inbound emails. Now, from Thunderbird, I'll bring up the inbox for my email account, and we can see that the reply from Gmail was received successfully. At this point, the Synology mail server is working properly, and the last few things I'd like to do is set up reporting and security. For reporting, I'll click on Report, and here you can see that I've already enabled daily reports, which sends out a report at midnight. I'm also using the Synology mail server itself to send the email to the local account that was set up earlier. Next, I'll scroll down to the Settings Check section and click on the Check button, which gives an overview of potential weaknesses that may exist on the system. As you can see, there's quite a few, and I'd like to get these resolved. I'll click Close, then I'll bring up the Security section to start working on these potential issues. Here, under the Spam section, I'll enable the Spam Assassin filter, then click on the Advanced Anti-Spam Settings button. From this window, I'll enable all of the options, then click OK. Next, I'll switch to the Antivirus section, then enable the Antivirus checkbox. I'll then switch to the Black and Whitelist section, and here I'll just limit the daily quota of outbound emails that each user can send to 25 emails. This could potentially limit spammers if an account is compromised as well. Next, I'll click on Content Scan, and here I'll enable the Dangerous Content Scan checkbox. I'll also enable the Convert HTML to Plain Text checkbox, as well as change the various tag and bug options to make tags ineffective. I'll click OK to finish up the setup. Then I'll switch over to Report once again and now if I click on the Check button under Settings Check, we can see that all of the potential weaknesses that we saw earlier have been addressed. 
That was a lot of steps, and I hope you made it through to the end and have a working Synology mail server up and running. If you have any questions or feedback, leave a comment in the description below. You can also contact me at this email address listed here on screen, which, as of the completion of this video, is still the Synology mail server on the DS220 Plus that I set up in this video. Lastly, if you'd like to support my work, check out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.